I want to tell a little story about AI and ABBA. You're surely familiar with ABBA, Dancing Queen. I made a mistake regarding ABBA, and I'll tell you the story. That has to do with our understanding of how artificial intelligence, large language models, are gathering their data and processing it to give us answers that contain plausible seeming words and that are sometimes right. I came across an instance, one of many, where the information provided by Bard and by Bing was obviously wrong, and I knew where it came from. It came from a Wikipedia article, but I made a mistake in that I fixed the Wikipedia article and didn't save the output from Bard or from Bing. After about a week, I thought about making this video and I went in to regenerate the search. And because the information had disappeared from Wikipedia, the information also disappeared from Bard and from Bing. So I went back to Wikipedia reverted to the previous version, asked the other editors to please leave it alone for a while. It's a pretty low stakes article in terms of making sure that the facts are right and the facts will be right as soon as I finish making this video. And then I waited and actually took a couple of weeks before the bogus facts made it back into Bard and into Bing. So let me tell you the story. For my daughter's big Christmas present this year, she'd asked for a turntable. So I got her a little portable unit. She only had one album at that point. So a couple of days later, she went out to a used vinyl shop and came home with several albums, including this one that she was excited about called ABBA, the album. And we didn't know anything about it. We were familiar with some of the songs on it, so we started to play it. And as it was playing, I just wandered over to Wikipedia to find out about the album, the album. It was released in Scandinavia on the 12th of December, 1977. But due to the massive pre-orders, the UK pressing plants were not able to press sufficient copies before Christmas 1977, and so it wasn't released in the UK until January 1978. ABBA the album was released in Scandinavia on the 12th of December 1977. In Sweden alone, it was pre-ordered in 760,000 copies, which equaled almost one copy per every tenth citizen. Okay. Due to the Cold War, Western music was actively discouraged throughout Eastern Europe at the time. Despite this, ABBA the album sold an unprecedented one million copies in Poland in 1977 exhausting the country's entire allocation of foreign currency. In Russia, only 200,000 copies were permitted to be pressed. Okay. Our first reaction was to laugh and think, wow, this was a bigger album than we even thought. And I checked out another site, for this classic pop, making ABBA the album. It's hard to digest now, yet as late as the 1970s, the bleak Cold War still cast a cloud in Eastern Europe, with degenerate Western music fiercely frowned upon. Luckily for the sweetly melodic ABBA, they couldn't be labeled as anything remotely corrosive, and their uplifting, catchy sounds won the day. Incredibly, in 1977, ABBA the album managed to shift an unheard of one million units across Poland, using up the country's whole foreign currency resource in the process. Though a limited pressing of 200,000 copies was somehow allowed in Russia, demand was such that the sadly thwarted sales potential was estimated at some 40 million. Such was the power of ABBA, it seemed. Some creative writer at Classic Pop really went to town with a Wikipedia article. And there are some other sites that echo this same quote-unquote fact. So after giggling a little bit, I started <laughs> to think, wait a second, this doesn't exactly add up. For one thing, they're talking about crashing the Polish economy in 1977. And earlier in the Wikipedia article, it said it wasn't even released outside the UK until 1978. So let's look into the numbers a little bit more. I found a website that lists record sales that had no mention of that. Then I went to the Polish Wikipedia page for the same album, thinking that if they'd managed to crash the Zloty, the Polish currency, there would be some mention of that in the Wikipedia article on the Polish side. But what do they say? The album is the fifth studio album by the Swedish band ABBA. The production of the album was combined with the movie, and three singles were released from the album and achieved great success around the world. Take a Chance on Me, The Name of the Game, and Eagle. Okay, so on the Polish site, no mention of crashing the Polish economy. Here's the Russian site, translated into English. The album is the fifth studio album, released in 1977. It is considered more Americanized than its predecessors, which is confirmed both by the confessions of the group members and indirectly by the success of the singles from the album in the American charts. In 1978, the album was released in the USSR. And that's pretty much it, a list of songs on the album and some references. Okay, so this is starting to not pan out. The English site had a footnote, so there's the reference. The book does exist. There's no way to check what's on page 201. Here's the book. Uh, looks like you can find some used copies of it on Amazon. 
That's sort of a classic Wikipedia trick to just throw in a citation that nobody's ever going to be able to check. And then it looks like you have a fact, so other editors aren't going to remove what you've put in. Now, this is where I went over to the AI and thought, okay, where does this information fit in the LLMs that Google and Microsoft are building their knowledge base on? I asked Bard, what, what effect did sales of ABBA's album called The Album have on the supply of foreign currency in Poland in 1977? The phenomenal success of ABBA's album The Album in Poland, particularly through pirated recordings and unofficial radio broadcasts, indirectly contributed to an increase in the supply of foreign currency in the country in 1977. All right, so this is January 8th. It was about a week after I'd removed the information from Wikipedia, so... This is their update when there was no misinformation coming in from their favorite source for general knowledge. Amidst Poland's political and economic challenges at the time, the popularity of Abba's music among young people led to an increased demand for foreign currency to purchase the album's recordings and access to unofficial radio broadcasts. This demand spurred the import of records and tapes, facilitating the inflow of foreign currency into the country. Yada yada. This in turn contributed to an increase in the overall supply of foreign currency in Poland. The influx of foreign currency through the unofficial sale of ABBA's music provided a temporary boost to the Polish economy, alleviating some of the currency shortages and stimulating economic activity in the entertainment sector. However, this influx was not sustainable and did not address the underlying economic and political issues facing Poland at the time. Okay, so that also goes in the face of economic theory. We won't examine that right now. Here's how Bing responded to a similar prompt. What do we know about the sales of the album by ABBA called The Albums? From a week after I fixed the Wikipedia entry, ABBA was immensely popular in Sweden, their home country, and the album was no exception. The album topped the Swedish charts upon its release in 1977 and remained there for a remarkable 58 weeks, becoming the best-selling album in Sweden of all time. It has since been certified 17 times platinum, indicating sales of over 4.9 million copies. What did bestsellingalbums.org say about sales in Sweden? Three quarters of a million. ABBA's music was also widely embraced in Poland, despite the country's political and economic challenges at the time. The band's songs gained popularity through pirated recordings and unofficial radio broadcasts, particularly among young people. While exact sales figures for the album in Poland are not available, it is estimated to have sold over a million copies. This sounds like they're getting some information maybe from other sources, like the creative writing on classic pop, right? USSR. In the Soviet Union, ABBA's music faced some initial resistance from authorities due to its perceived Western influence. However, the band's popularity grew steadily through unofficial channels, particularly among young people who are drawn to their catchy melodies and romantic themes. Unofficial recordings and bootleg tapes circulated widely, and ABBA concerts in other Eastern Bloc countries were eagerly anticipated by Soviet audiences. While official sales figures for the album in the USSR are not available, it is believed to have sold millions of copies through informal channels. Now, from the perspective of fixing the general knowledge base for the LLMs, this was only a partial success. But from the perspective of documenting what's going on, I'd made a mistake. So what I did is I went back into Wikipedia, reverted to the previous version, and asked fellow editors to kindly leave it alone for a little while so we could witness what was happening and we could make this video and I'll see this together. So after I unfixed my mistake, I went back from time to time and asked the same question. While official sales figures for Poland are unavailable, it is estimated that the album sold between 500,000 and a million copies in the country. This makes it one of the best-selling albums of all time in Poland. The album was smuggled into Poland from the West and became an underground sensation. Young Poles would gather to listen to the album on cassette tapes and dream of a freer life. In the USSR, it is estimated that over 10 million copies of the album were sold in the USSR before it was officially released. And here, finally, the other day, the bad information from Wikipedia made it back into their LLM. And what do we have? Well, for one thing, in Sweden, it was a smash hit, selling over 2.5 million copies. It also topped the album charts for 17 weeks and was the best-selling album of 1977, despite being released in 1978. The album also spawned numerous hit singles, including Dancing Queen, Money, 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 and Knowing Me, Knowing You, none of which are on that album. ABBA's success had a significant impact on the Swedish economy, boosting tourism and exports. The group's popularity also helped to promote Swedish culture and language abroad. Although all songs on the album are sung in English, so why is it boosting Swedish language? Okay. Poland. The album was a massive underground sensation. It was smuggled into the country from the West and became a symbol of freedom and rebellion for young Poles. The album's catchy melodies and upbeat lyrics resonated with Polish audiences who were longing for a more open and democratic society. 
While official sales figures are unavailable, it's estimated that the album sold between half a million and a million copies in Poland. The album's popularity had a significant impact on the allocation of foreign currency in Poland. As Poles sought to purchase the album, the demand for foreign currency increased. This led to a depletion of Poland's foreign currency reserves, which had a negative impact on the country's economy. USSR, the album was not officially released until 1982. However, the album was still widely circulated. It's estimated that over 10 million copies of the album were sold in the USSR before it was released, and more in that vein. I asked Bard to outline a PowerPoint presentation on this topic, and they went straight to the Wikipedia article. This text might look familiar. 760,000 copies in Sweden alone pre-ordered, one copy per every tenth citizen, so that's straight out of Wikipedia. Under the title of the slide, Sales in Sweden, it says, the album sold one million copies in Poland in 1977, exhausting the country's entire allocation of foreign currency. Again, right back to the Wikipedia misinformation. And under the title of the slide, Sales in Poland, it says that in the USSR, only 200,000 copies were pr permitted to be pressed, but demand within the country indicated that they could have sold 40 million copies. So there, with the misinformation in Wikipedia, they're really taking us for a ride. And this is what I got back from Microsoft Bing's Copilot the other day. ABBA's album, the album, was released in Scandinavia on December 12, 1977. So they've changed the date around to the American style, and was pre-ordered in 760,000 copies in Sweden alone, which almost equaled one copy per every tenth citizen. The album sold 1 million copies in Poland in 1977, exhausting the country's entire allocation of foreign currency. In the USSR, only 200,000 copies were permitted to be pressed, but demand within the country indicated they could have sold 40 million copies. Unfortunately, I could not find any information on the sales of the album in 1978. Back to the bad information on Wikipedia, it's not that bad. It has nothing to indicate 40 million copies. That's coming from another source on the web, such as our friends at Classic Pop. Okay, so let's do one more little experiment here. I have not done this on Bing. Let's produce a PowerPoint presentation on what do we know about the sales of the album by ABBA called The Album in Sweden, Poland, and the USSR in 1977. One of the slides should focus on what happened to the allocation of foreign currency in Poland. Now, regarding your request, I'm afraid I cannot create a PowerPoint presentation for you. However, I can provide you with some information. According to footnote four, Wikipedia, the album was released in Scandinavia on December 12th. The album was pre-ordered in 760,000 copies in Sweden alone, which equaled almost one copy per every 10 citizen. Familiar information here. In Poland, the album sold an unprecedented 1 million copies in 1977, exhausting the country's entire allocation of foreign currency. In the USSR, only 200,000 copies were permitted to be pressed. However, demand within the USSR indicates they could have sold 40 million copies. Before closing this out, let's just go back to the edits and undo the redone damage that I had done. So we're getting rid of, in Sweden, it was pre-ordered in 760,000 copies. Obviously, if it only sold 750,000 copies over the course of its existence, it wasn't pre-ordered at 760,000 copies. And then the due to the Cold War stuff, we're going to delete. And then all the stuff about Poland and Russia will delete. So I'll just get back to honesty. And it looks like it's going to undo my revisions, but keep the subsequent revision, so I don't have to go and change those back. And now the entry is clean. We've removed the bad information. It should disappear from Bing and from Bard pretty soon, but we can't stop them from hallucinating about the topic, especially since the waters have been polluted on other websites as well. So there's no way to purge it from the internet. Therefore, there's no way to purge it from the large language models. Therefore, we're stuck with whatever garbage is out there coming into whatever we ask AI. So although there are plenty of footnotes coming from generative AI, and it has the veneer of authority, the veneer of credibility. If we dig in, we can see that what we're getting from these AI engines is really what at its best is only as good as what's in the source material on the web, and the engines are going to generate all sorts of things to satisfy the Make Up Stuff algorithm. Please read what I've written about Musa, the Make Up Stuff algorithm. Here's the address. Please also make sure you're subscribed to the Pirate Professor channel here on YouTube. If you're able to help out on Patreon, greatly appreciated. We're only about 999,000 subscribers away from a million, so getting close. I'll look forward to reading and hopefully responding to your comments or using them as source for future videos. See you next time.